Thank you, Beth, and good afternoon, everyone. As it was mentioned, my name is Luis Narvaez. I am the Associate Vice Chancellor for Adult Education at the City Colleges of Chicago. I have had the pleasure of him being in this role for now a little bit over a year um, ago. Prior to that, I was with the Chicago Public Schools doing a lot of similar work uh, with um, special populations throughout the city of Chicago. I am a former ESL student, or as I tell my wife, I'm a lifelong learner of, of, the, of the English language. Um, I'm also raising two beautiful uh, bilingual children uh, who are fluent and proficient in both English and Spanish. And that's one of the things that I like to promote is uh, not only the learning of English as a second language for a lot of our newcomer students, but also encouraging everyone to learn a second language, whether English is your native language or not. <laughs> clap, clap it up, thank you. Speaking of uh, bilingual students, I have the honor and pleasure of introducing uh, two uh, student panelists who will, will be joining us today. I have here uh, with me Aida Zakarieva, adult education student at Malcolm X College. Please cap, cap it up for her and join us. Thank you, Aida, for being here. We were just talking about um, all of her experiences, as well as Veronica Posada, adult education student at Truman College. Please help me welcome her as well. Now, last but not least, leading a lot of the discussion this afternoon about research around English language learning or, and learners, we have Nikki Edgecombe, Dr. Nikki Edgecombe, Senior Research Scholar with Community College Research Center. Please, Nikki, join us on stage. Let's welcome them all. What a, great what a great opportunity to have this discussion around uh, English language learners and the work that we have been able to do here at the Chicago Public Schools, um, not only in supporting um, ESL students who are new into the country, but supporting their transition onto other pathways that we have been able to develop with them in partnership with all of their college leadership that I, to, I want to acknowledge for their support. Um, the way that we are structured at the City Colleges of Chicago's adult education program we have uh, senior deans who lead the work at, at the college level, along with associate deans, managers, and coordinators. We also have transition specialists who are working with students as they complete their highest level of, of instruction so that they can move on to whatever college and career aspirations that they have. We also have a lot of district support um, in, in a series of uh, executive directors that we have. We also have uh, specialists who are guiding a lot of this work in conjunction, again, with the colleges. This is not work that we could do um, by ourselves. But we wouldn't be here and we wouldn't be able to do this work if we did not have students who are uh, taking advantage of the free opportunities. And I want to highlight this, the free opportunities that we have for, for both uh, ESL and GD available here at the City Colleges of Chicago. And with that being said, I would like to start off by asking our, our, our student panelists today, what brought you to City Colleges of Chicago initially, right? What, what, what was, what, how did you find out about our program? And then where did you find yourself now? How many years have you been taking classes with us? And what, what do you see, where do you see yourself now? And where do you want to go next? And Aida, we can start with you. Uh, hello, everyone. I thank you for having me. And I want to say I, I've been studying English for many, many years. However, when I moved to the United States like three years ago, it turned out that I could not speak at all. But hopefully I get to Malcolm X College to ESL class and my first teacher was Miss Crowell and because of her. Let's give it up to all of our wonderful <laughs> educators who make this work possible. Yeah, thank you. And because of um, friendly environment that she creates in our class and she can connect all of us with different background, different, we were different ages, different countries, different uh, traditions, different languages, but she can connect us. And in two weeks I could speak. And, and right now I can speak with you. And maybe sometimes I'm, <clears throat> I am a Ianostro specialist back to Russia. And uh, I moved here with my family and I'm going to be a professor maybe sometimes in medical school here. And thank for City Colleges of Chicago, all my teachers that I can do it. Thank you. Thank you, let's give it up for her. And you will become a professor one day. In Spanish we have a saying called, si se puede, it can be done. And we know you will, you will be making it. Uh, Veronica, how about you?
Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, uh, I've been living in Chicago for more than 20 years, and uh, but I stay home. I was a mom. I'm, you know, my kids are now in college. Two of them. The other one is 11. But I, uh, that time, I decided that um, I didn't want them to lose their uh, Spanish. So I sacrificed myself, and I speak Spanish all my life with them. Even my husband used to tell me, oh, she doesn't understand, don't worry, just try to speak in Spanish to her. And I, I mean, <laughs> I had to, eh, if I don't speak, but yes, I can, now I can. I, I tried to, I went to college. <laughs> I, I've been working kind of hard because um, this is my second chance, that's the way I see. I have a degree from Mexico, but I couldn't do anything, obviously. And uh, now I'm pursuing, um, because my life was kids, I'm pursuing to be an ECE teacher right now. And, uh, and thank you. And I am in the bridge program. And uh, Luis said that it's, it's free, and that works. You know, it's giving me really a second chance because with two kids in college and the other one, like he's growing, he's 11, and this, in, in, there's no way I can could afford something like this. So this is my, I am happy, I feel so like, you know, um, even if I don't do, like if I can't teach someday, what I'm doing now is giving me a really, really good feeling and I feel so like complete, you know, I'm feeling complete right now. So. Thank you, thank you. Let's give it up for Veronica again. And before we pass it over to, uh, to Nikki, uh, I do want to remind folks that you have note cards on your desk, on your tables. If there's any questions you would like to uh, write down for our uh, panelists, please, uh, you can start doing that, and we'll be collecting them in a little bit. We'll open it up for Q&A. One thing that I also want to um, mention, I, was, I know I was sitting with them in the back, the adult learner team working out of AVI. Um, if you can just wave your hands back there. OK, we have them back there. Um, in, in the case that you come across, um, you know, applicants or students like the ones that we've been talking to, a lot of times uh, folks come in already with several credentials from their home countries. And we have a team that can assist those students to identify how much of what they already acquire back home can be transferred into a credit here. So they can advance further and faster uh, their, their, their learning experience. So just please keep that in mind as well. Um, and Nikki, we've, we've known each other for, for a good number of years now. Um, you knew me when I was at Chicago Public Schools doing a lot of the work promoting by literacy and working with um, native Spanish speaking students uh, and speakers of other languages, ensuring that they did not lose their heritage language while they were acquiring a second language, in this case, um, English. And it was nice now to come over to the City College side and continue to be able to work together as, as partners in uh, what has um, come to be a very strong and interesting uh, research that, that your team has been conducting. So can you tell us a little bit of, of background as, as to how that got initiated and where is the research at today? Sure, good to see everybody. It's nice to see some friends I haven't seen in three years um, in person. Uh, again, my name's Nikki Edgecombe. I'm with the Community College Research Center. We're based in New York at Teachers College. I spent um, the first decade of my career at CCRC and still do studying developmental education. And one of the important elements that I experienced as part of that work was hearing the stories of, of students like Aida and, and Veronica who are English language learners and may or may not have gotten caught in our developmental education structures. And it made me think a lot about the difference between what it means to be learning English versus um, uh, perhaps trying to address gaps in your academic preparation. Those are very two distinctly different things. And as we've already heard from um, our, our student panelists, they oftentimes do come to our colleges with advanced degrees and credentials, but because of language barriers, um, they oftentimes don't necessarily have access to the curriculum. I was lucky enough to begin conversations with city colleges early in their learning agenda. 
Um, and it was a fantastic conversation because it wasn't a project about English learners. It was a project about what do you guys need? Um, how can the Community College Research Center be a partner? And that led into um, conversations about actually a range of folks that I'm actually still hearing about. English learners were, was one, adult learners was another. And so we actually just kind of went back and forth over time, eventually got toward a um, fundable project, worked together in 2018 to submit a proposal to the Institute of Education Sciences at the Department of Education. And if, for those who know IES, you wait for long, almost a year <laughs> before you hear anything. And we were lucky and grateful to be awarded um, the, the project. We're, we structured the project as an exploratory one, understanding the experiences and outcomes of English learners across the credit and non-credit adult education divisions. I'll be honest, we came in with a strong focus on the credit side, and we still have that focus, but actually as part of the learning agenda, we kicked off the project with a, a meeting of folks here in July 2019, and they helped to steer the research team toward um, additional examination of adult education. And I'll just say, coming from a dev ed research study background where we thought things were complicated, that's simple compared to adult education. And so I just, lots of um, kudos to the administrators and staff and instructors who work in that space because they're doing, um, and CCC is making change amid a lot of um, strict regulations that limits what they can do. Nonetheless, they are not um, <laughs> uh, discouraged. And with Louise and his team, I've seen them make um, really lovely strides. And I think you're really on a path to being a, 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 an exemplar for ways in which you can support English learners regardless of their goal, which I think sort of speaks to some of the things that we found as part of the research. Absolutely, thank you so much, Nikki. Um, I am very blessed to be working with a very dedicated, passionate team. Um, and it's easy for us because we see the needs of uh, adult education students every day, just you know, walking around the city of Chicago. Census data tells us the large amount of uh, residents here who uh, never completed a high school diploma, for instance, and the advantages that we can uh, provide them in coming into one of our buildings and receive that free education that will lead them towards um, earning their Illinois high school diploma. And then we know that, that thousands and thousands of residents here in the city of Chicago, myself included, who uh, grew up learning uh, language again, other than English, and who can take advantage of our free ESL education uh, classes, again, leading them towards whatever pathway it is that they decide to take. Uh, for our students here um, on stage, uh, we definitely a lot of times talk about the support the students need to be successful both inside the classroom with a wonderful group of educators that we have um, teaching who are very passionate about seeing students succeed as well, as well as the supports that are necessary uh, on the outside, right, to ensure um, the, your, your academic success. Can you talk about um, maybe one or two aspects of your education uh, where you had to rely on the support of someone or, or, or something, an office or an individual, how were you able to be successful by utilizing services uh, that supported you towards, your, um, towards completing your, your classes? Thinking back about your experience, what was that one instance or, or instances uh, where you received the support that you needed to be successful? And Veronica, we can start with you. Well, um, well the support that I can think right now is uh, the adult education specialist. They are in Truman College, for example. They are a really good team, a great team, and they help always the, the students to go, because it's really new for us to be in these areas, you know, and they help us to look where we have um, the help and where we can go and the things that we can do around the, the college. And, um, I think that's that's a really amazing team that you are you are I think you are working with right because every college must have uh, the adult specialist um, transition mm -hmm. and um, 
well, that's what I think. Like, uh, there's a lot of uh, things that we can, uh, we are uh, able to do because uh, the resources that we are we have, like for example, the writing center that we can go because uh, writing is really hard for me. So every time that I need support, I I know that I can go there. Um, I don't know, like that's those the things that I can think right now. Thank you, um, and yes, we also have an amazing team of transition specialists uh, supporting individuals um, like, like you know, um, yourself. We're also promoting the Gateway Scholarship, which is another opportunity for, for people to take advantage of um, a scholarship program that will put students into the uh, path towards earning an associate's degree. That's something they would like to pursue. And you talked about all the services that we have available. And, and I really got to give kudos to uh, Chancellor Salgado, uh, Provost Potter, uh, for making sure that everything that is available for any student at City Colleges of Chicago is available for all students at the City Colleges of Chicago, regardless if they are part of the ed adult education program or if they are on the credit side. So that was something that I, when I came in a year ago, was very happy to see the fact that everyone's embedded and Im invested in making sure that all students are successful, regardless of the program that, that they're a part of. Aida, for you, in, in, in thinking back to the classes that you have taken and, and, and your experience, is, is there something that you accredit you know, for having been supportive in your journey, something that really helped you succeed and move forward? Uh, thank you for the question. Yes, because do you know, of course, during the class we practice like literacy, oracy, uh, everything that we need to do. But however, for me as a person who are, U United States is new country for me. Do you know, it's totally different country, not totally, but different country from my country. And that's why it's not only English class for me, it's also, do you know, I felt like a child when I came here. I, don't, I did not know nothing about life here. And that's why English class, it's not only about English, it's about living in the United States. And also, do you know, uh, support and this environment in class helped me and my classmates to, to feel, do you know, like relax, unchanged, and that's why it helped uh, us uh, make this progress in our English. And do you know, we still, I started classes in, at Malcolm X like three years ago, just right before the pandemic. It was like two months before the pandemic we were in a class. <laughs> and, but we're still in touch, we're still friends, and we still sometimes go outside and still learning English, of course. <laughs> and thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, yeah, you can give it up for her. There's definitely a certain bond that gets created within our adult education classroom. Um, and your story is a story that I heard of so many students who were able to um, stay in touch with, with their uh, teacher, who were able to stay in touch with their classmates and continue that bond. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, Nikki, from, from the research side um, and your, in, your initial uh, look at um, ESL here, have you been able to walk away with, um, with ideas as to what, what's really working well? Obviously, you know, I can thank you for the shout out and, and for recognizing the work that we're doing, but um, what are you looking at that you would say it's working well when it comes to English language learners? Well, I think one of the things that we learned as part of this work, we did a student survey and we really learned a lot more about the diversity of goals and objectives students had in enrolling in a, adult education, um, ESL in particular. So there is that group of students who aspire to just improve their everyday English. Some who are already working, who are looking to improve their um, English for purposes of employment. And then there's this group of students for whom this is a first sort of engagement with US institutions. And for a lot of them, they get warmed up to the idea of post-secondary. I mean, that's a win, right? For city colleges and for the city and for the country. And so how do we make the process for students to make that transition if they so desire from adult education to ESL. And I think to, to my point is what's evident is that this transition specialist, for example, has been around for years. This is, this is not new. I feel like City Colleges has been thinking about things. I think from, from our perspective, one of the opportunities feels like how do you put it together to work with the pathways that students are choosing? 
So I think it's what, that's the opportunity, right? How do you use institutional policy and practice? How do you use incentives for students, you know, for the institution in ways that allow students to meet these varying goals? And I do think it's important for adult education, whether it's on the GED side or the ESL side, to always be thinking about how are we warming more students up to the prospect of earning a post-secondary credential. The other thing I just wanna flag, which is I studied this because I think multilingualism is an asset, and sometimes within higher education, you know, remember at institutions not far from here, people pay $50,000, $60,000 a year to become multilingual. Yet in certain institutions, we've decided that's gonna be a deficit. But I think one of the things we know is this multilingualism is important. And part of our student survey that we didn't, uh, a finding we didn't expect to see is that among the students on the credit side who responded to our survey, some of whom um, are not enrolled in any ESL class, some four in 10 indicated they were multilingual. Okay, so that tells me City College is serving these students regardless of whether you're providing the supports they need or not. And so becoming just more aware that these are your students and they bring rich histories and, and that multilingualism feels like a really important opportunity. Thank you, That's, that is fascinating. <laughs> Give it up for her and the research. Um, yeah, this brings back a lot of memories in just talking to, again, both, both students that we have on the, on the GED side and the ESL side reminding them to never let anyone make them feel ashamed for where they're at and where they're trying to, to, to get to. And reminding them as well of how proud we are of them taking this, this first step for a lot of them towards this journey that will take them into different, many different uh, places. Um, Aida, this question is for you. Uh, so get ready. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's not a tough question. It's just, um, can you think of one thing that your adult education teachers did in your class that helped you the most in learning English? What, what, was, what was one thing that a teacher or a series of teachers did that helped you the most in learning English? Um, thank you for your question. Uh, I think, to be honest, first word, word that my teacher, Ms. Cromwell, told us in the class, it take risks and do not afraid to make mistakes. And do you know, I think, it helped me a lot. And I sometimes say to my friends who knew in the country, you know, it's not only about language, it's about life, about everything. Just take risks and do not afraid to make mistakes. Because that's what, it, how we learn, you know, everything, not only English. And I think it's very, very important. And I still remember it. <laughs> there you go, thank you. And thank you to your, uh, to your former teacher for that. Um, and as a reminder for everyone here and everyone um, watching us, um, virtually, we are still recruiting for our 12-week term starting next next month. So if you know anyone who can benefit from this free opportunity to learn English or complete their uh, high school diploma, please send them to one of our colleges and we'll be happy to, uh, to work with them in enrolling them. Uh, Veronica, this question is for you. What can help ensure that students like yourself um, can feel the support from the services being provided and available to adult education students. Um, so what else can we be doing on the uh, student service side to make sure that you have a successful, successful experience as a student at the city colleges? For the question, um, I think, um, I'm, I'm thinking right now in my group of, uh, the other women that are in, my, in the class with me, we are a cohort of uh, 14 women, all ages. And we all are pursuing the same thing. It's amazing for me, it's an amazing experience. So sometimes I feel like we need like, uh, you know, uh, more time to know their stories, because together we can make uh, really like, uh, you know, um, comfort, ourselves and feel proud and, and walk together to the same, you know, way that we, and sometimes we just have time just to be in the class and that's it and do the, our stuff and, and sometimes I would like to, I'd really love to help and I would like to have more time uh, to help them. 
because uh, yes, the teachers are amazing, and, and, and but uh, I think it could be a really nice to to build a group with a woman's like you know support to each other and build something from from like from us to the world. I could say that. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> women, women definitely lead, lead lead the world, and I'm gonna say that uh, and. Greetings to my wife watching from home. As a reminder, we are still taking note cards. If you have a question or comment for our panelists, feel free to write it down, raise your hand, and we'll be walking around to um, collect them. Um, Veronica, your, your journey through uh, one of our bridge programs, right in the early childhood education program, um, has um, really sparked a lot of interest in me, not only as an educator myself who was in CPS, understanding the huge need for bilingual educators, not only Spanish speakers, but Polish speakers, Arabic speakers, Urdu, and the like. Um, in the classes that you have been able to, to take so far and, and the experience that you have acquired about what it takes to be an early childhood educator, um, what, what is one takeaway that you have, um, you know, something that you've learned that you've acquired that you know is gonna be helping you when you transition into the classroom setting and you yourself become a teacher. Okay. Um, and, and you will become a teacher one day. Um, there's, there's no doubt about that. I hope so, thank you. Um, well, <sighs> how to treat a person like a person. That's the first thing. Um, because I was able to meet a lot of women from every other country and every, you know, um, we have a lot of things um, different, but at the same time we are we want, we are pursuing the same goal, the same goal. So um, for me, it's like to see the kids, like a human being, like a kid, like doesn't matter where they come from or, but yes, it's important to see the differences because uh, we can, you know, we are all different and that's, that's a really amazing part about this mm -hmm. because we can build from that something great. That's, that's my, you know, that's what I see. I see that um, it is important to see the other person, the person right next to you, the differences, but at the same time that you can do something great, you know? Absolutely, thank you. That, again, you're ready for the classroom. I know I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not your instructor, but understanding, right, what you will be walking to um, in a classroom setting, especially in such a diverse uh, city like the city of Chicago, is, is very important. Um, Nikki, this, this question is for you. In, in understanding the needs of ESL students, both on the credit side as well as the adult education side, um, what should practitioners and others be aware of as it relates to um, ways that we need to think outside the box in catering to the needs of the students? Right? The, the, the question was specific to uh, traditionally a lot of classes that are offered are offered you know, Monday through Friday between the span of 8, 8, 8 a.m. And, and, and 2, 3 p.m. that may not necessarily uh, accommodate the type of students that we're trying to serve. Um, you know, have you identified uh, success stories from the field in terms of things that, that work in supporting our, our ESL student population specifically and, and meeting, meeting them where they're at? So I think this gets, so the answer is yes, and I think it gets back to the notion that, at least in the adult ed ESL space, and I'd argue in community colleges, people come with a lot of different goals. So some of it is about understanding what those goals are and ensuring students have pathways that help them fulfill those goals and the supports they need to be successful on those, those pathways. You know, the city colleges was, preparing to pilot a hybrid course before the pandemic in ESL. I think it obviously was able to translate some of that planning to, to shift their instruction online in ways that I'm sure you all have learned a lot about that could support and expand instructional hours and the like. I think one of the things that I still struggle with is um, like traditional developmental education sequences ESL sequences are quite long. And so for a student who does aspire to get through the six levels here, that, that's a real commitment. That is hard to do if you have a life. <laughs> so 
how do we begin to change the policy conversation to give colleges like city colleges more flexibility to think about the ways we can um, can serve adult, uh, adult education ESL students. I will say if hopefully Caval's left, <laughs> I do know people in Octay in the, in the Office of Career and Technical and Adult Education at the Department of Education do feel like the time is ripe for change. I've never heard that before. I don't know if they're playing me or not, but if they're not, I want the city colleges to stand side by side by, with researchers to talk about the kinds of change that things like placement, um, in, uh, measuring level gains, course sequences that are now dictated by the feds and administered by the state. I want them to open up those conversations in ways that allow those policies, programs, and practices to change in ways that support students to reach their English learning goals, their educational goals, and their workforce goals. Thank you, thank you, that we can celebrate that. And I know from experience that Dr. Edgecombe's email is always open and available for ideas and suggestions, so please do send them uh, her way as she you know, connects research with, with policy, which is very important work, especially for those of us here in the community college. Uh, setting. We need those big advocates out in the field, so thank you for that. Um, either for, um, for either one of our students, um, how are you able to adapt to the, the new normal that the pandemic brought to us as it uh, relates to, uh, you know, online learning that you had to do for a while, um, but also in the type of flexibility that you found within our programs. Again, you know, we have programs that meet um, in the evenings, for example, for working adults. Saturdays as well, um, you know, we have hybrid classes that was already mentioned. Um, how did that help you in, in navigating this and getting to this point um, with so much that went on for the last three years? Uh, to be honest, it's amazing how fast city colleges switched from in-person class to online during the pandemic. I think it was like two weeks maybe, and we come back in our class. It, it was online class, however, for some people it's very convenient to take online class because they have children, sometimes small children. I have son, he's in college also. It's different from when you have small children. However, it was amazing. It was fast, it was smooth, do you know? And I'm, I'm still looking for Moscow for my clinic and it was also online, and that's why I'm a little familiar <laughs> with Zoom conference and other stuff. And that's why for me personally, it was pretty easy to switch to online. However, I, I repeat, for me, it's not enough. I love, do you know, like meet with people in person, touch, hug people, <laughs> and that's why, but it was amazing. And also college offers different uh, days, like Saturday, for example, different hours, morning, evening, it is also very convenient for people who are working. Do you know? It, it's, it's amazing. It it's helps a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we try to be flexible and adapt to the needs of the students. Again, thank you to the college leadership uh, during that time uh, because your, your help was very much appreciated. Our wonderful deans as well for all the work that they did. Um, everyone in the, in, in the college staff and district office uh, for moving so quickly so that you could see a seamless transition from one modality to the next um, when, when the time called for it. Um, Nikki, can you tell us, uh, and, and you touched on this a little bit, how important are the partnerships that you're able to develop uh, in the work that you're doing and in the advocacy that, that you're conducting? Um, and are there perhaps partnerships that have not yet come knocking on your door or that you have not reached out to? Um, that you are either contemplating or exploring reaching out to in the future or that you would like to hear from because they may be in the audience or they may be watching us. What other partnerships can help make this the work that you're doing and the work of the center, um, you know, give back even, even more so than, than that has happened so far? Well, I, I, I think this project was a, a great example. Um, I've got some Chicago time on my um, resume, and so when, when the project actually started, I, I reached out to friends at University of Chicago and 
made those connections, the Latino Policy Forum, other places where conversations about adult literacy, adult education, immigrant education were happening. Those felt um, more like we wanted to let you know we're doing this work. You know, we, we're, we're excited to be working in Chicago and we kept those conversations going. I'd love for opportunities for my research team to think more with City Colleges of Chicago and others around how we then take what we're learning and put that in the hands of those organizations to, that are doing the work here. So you guys, I think, have, have begun a really powerful path towards reform and supporting the students that you have. Um, how do we think about leveraging community-based advocacy organizations, others in the city or nationally, that can reinforce those efforts, can give you more resources and guidance and political sway that you know, my research center can't, can't give you. Um, but there's out, there, there, are, there are those entities out there. They're in the room today. So I just think connecting those dots feels like an important um, opportunity. I'm a researcher, so I always have questions. Like, so there's, no, there's a never-ending list of things I want to understand more about the Veronica and Aidas of the world and how they have done what they've done and for maybe some of their peers who haven't been able to be successful, what are some of the obstacles that they ran into? Um, so my list will never end, but I don't want that to keep me from taking what we've learned and working with you all to, to, to make change wherever change needs to be made. Thank you, thank you. Um, we need we need more 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 passionate folks like you. So I hear you know uh, you have a a lot of supporters out there, and we appreciate that. This is your last call to uh, complete an old card. If you have a question, we we have a question uh, there for us. In the meantime, um, Veronica, this question is for you. The largest group of uh, ESL students that we have in our classrooms currently in the City Colleges of Chicago uh, do come from Spanish speaking background, and and part of what I have been tasked with is reaching out to a yet a larger uh, population of potential students to invite them to come to us and take that initial step, right? Uh, which, you know, Ida was also re making reference to. From your perspective and, you know, from what you see within your community, how can, how, how can we do a better job of recruiting even more students to uh, come to the City Colleges of Chicago and take, take advantage of, of, of those opportunities? Again, both on the ESL side, but we also have, for instance, Spanish GD available for our Spanish-speaking community. Um, you know, what else can we be doing to, to bring in more, more students with similar backgrounds like yourself? As, as a mother perspective, I can say that if you go to the, I don't know, the, uh, the schools, for example, and talk to the parents over there, you're going to find a lot of mothers like me, you know, that they are just in, in, in their, you know, house. And um, I think that's it. The, 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 there, we are there. So you just need to go over there and tell, like, um, give them the opportunity to, to go out because they can't see if they don't know that it exists, you know? So that's, that's, I think that's a really good place that you can start. Thank you, absolutely, I appreciate that. You don't know what you don't know, right? And so um, I really gotta give kudos to um, Vice Chancellor Williams and his team, you know, they, they send out recruiters um, everywhere around the city, right? We think of traditionally or historically uh, sending folks to, to local high schools and talk to that population. But we are at every event possible where we can promote our, our programs, both on the adult education side as well as on, on the credit side. Um, we have a partnership with Chicago Public Schools of Family and Community Engagement uh, Office where we are now at every parent university site throughout the city promoting our programs, talking to parents, offering classes on site um, at those parent university uh, locations. We're also at different off sites, churches, uh, public libraries, parks, uh, everywhere where we have an enough, you know, a large enough um, audience that we can capture and bring those programs to them. Um, we, I have the pleasure of working with my senior deans along with um, Vice Chancellor Mason's team in, in sending people out there. So if you can think of a space within the city of Chicago um, that, it, 
there is a population that could benefit from what we have to offer, and we have not yet established a partnership. Please feel free to talk to uh, myself, Vice Chancellor Mason, Vice Chancellor uh, Williams, and we'll definitely be making it happen. Uh, to wrap up, we have a question uh, for you, Nikki. Um, the question is, what can educators who teach academic ESL, which is classified or coded as developmental education by the state of Illinois, do to have policymakers understand that academic ESL courses are not to be treated as remedial courses? That is for you, yes. Oh, I'm about to go off. I know that was from you, Anna. <laughs> um, listen, you know, in any other context, when we're asking somebody to learn another language in a college, we give them credit for it. Oftentimes, transferable credit, credit that um, uh, accrues to their program of study. There is work that's happening in California where um, there is just a, a stronger focus on looking at credit ESL as a transferable set of courses, and again, this is part of that, that policy conversation that needs to happen, but work by the Public Policy Institute of California is suggesting that's quite promising to support exactly what Provost Potter was talking about, and that's student momentum. So, you know, to the extent, I'm a big fan of finding gray space in public policy. So sometimes policies get read one way, but if you look closely, you see they don't actually say you can't do that. And I think it's time for institutions to, to really push the envelope around doing the things we know that support student success, allow students to build momentum, just changing mindsets, valuing multilingualism as an asset, not a deficit. Can you imagine what that means for students? So I think there's, there's space where we can do it, and I think our friends in California and a few other places have begun to take steps to show us what um, supporting, I mean, just take a minute. If four in 10 learners in, C, in, in the city colleges credit divisions are multilingual, you're already dealing with this. You're having to support English language learning across disciplines and across students' college journeys. Let's codify it. Let's give faculty and instructors the professional learning support that they need to do that well. So I think that that, and that makes it all the more attractive for students who may have taken the path through adult education in to see they, they value us here. You know, they're paying attention to us. They view our language as an asset. That's gonna make them much more likely to stick with city colleges and hopefully attain a credential. Absolutely, thank you. Yes, wrap it up. Um, so we're gonna be, thank you for that. We're gonna be uh, wrapping up. Um, but before that, um, one final question for, for our students. First of all, you did a fantastic job. Um, let's give it up for them. I know that um, if I would have been asked to do this panel in my native language, I wouldn't have no problem, but obviously doing it in a second language, uh, it's, it's, it's obviously the, the more uh, the trickier, but you did a fantastic job. Um, we are in the second week of the 16 week term here at the City College of, of, of Chicago. Um, just uh, tell us again to wrap up, what class are you taking right now? And um, what, has been, what has it been like um, you know, with the start of the spring semester for you? Thank you, and I'm taking ESL class. Right now I'm taking com oral communication because I'm struggling with speaking. Hard to tell. Yeah, but, <laughs> but do you know, like two years ago, I could not speak. It, it, you know, it's hard to imagine, but when you understand everything, you can read, you can write, but you could not speak. And you have so many things to say to share with people, do you know? And uh, I think this power is in differences. It is so amazing to uh, be among so different people, do you know? Uh, and maybe for young people it's a little easy because they're always in English environment, do you know? In the school, in college. But for us as adults, it's a little different because we speak in class and then we come home and usually we speak our native language. And it's hard. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. hard, but do you know, uh, it's so amazing. And I repeat, like, power is in difference. And um, I'm so grateful that I can't speak English right now. <laughs> so many doors open. 
are, and it's, it's amazing, you know, it's like a new work, it's like a new life for me, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, let's give it up for her. And absolutely, if you have never had the chance to walk into a, an ESL classroom, I've never been to the United Nations right out in New York, but I would imagine it would be something like that. Uh, different cultures, different languages, all, 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 all coming together for one single purpose. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Veronica? Thank you for having me today. Um, just a quick thing. Um, I never in my life believe, I, I think about being in a place like this today. So thank you for having me. And, um, <laughs> The other thing is, um, right now I am in a bridge program. That means that I am taking two credit classes this semester, child, child development um, 120 and 147. And I'm also taking um, classes for to get the RTW test that I'm so worried about, at least, if I tell you the truth. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's it. And, and of course, the English, like we like write and speak, and that's the other one. So I am a full, like I am in college from Monday to Thursday every day. Yeah, almost a full-time student. And you got this. We know you got this. Let's give it up one more time for our panelists. Thank you so much for your, for your wonderful work. Again, reach out to your uh, closest college if you're interested in our free adult education offerings. And with that, we'll pass it uh, back to the next presenter. Thank you so much.